Hello, everypony. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm going to be reading Passons Chapter 3. Sorry about, like, leaving you guys hanging for, like, what was it? One month? Two months now? Or so? For a while, let's just say that. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been busy, uh, sick, and been procrastinating. I'm straight up saying I procrastinated, but... I was really sick and busy and stuff. So anyways, shall we begin? School Days and Memories is the chapter title. Knox clung to Twilight's front leg as the pair looked at the building ahead of them. It was painted in rich, welcoming reds, surrounded by a lush green yard, the Building was decorated with festive hearts. Even the weather vane on the top of the bell tower featured a heart, looking almost like a cupid's arrow. A playground was visible behind the building, while in front there was a flagpole, the head sculpture of a pony wearing a square flat topped hat with a tassel. It was a welcoming sight to most young ponies in the community and a place of fond memories to many of the Ponyville's residents. It was a place of learning, where ponies studied for a bright future and made good friends. It was the Ponyville Elementary School, where the Mulberry Earth Pony, Shirley, granted the gift of knowledge to her students. It was a place that utterly terrified Knox. Do I really have to go? Knox asked trying her best to hide behind Twilight's leg. Yes, Twilight replied. For how long? Knox wouldn't. You're signed up for the morning class, so you'll be done around lunchtime. I'll come back to pick you up then. But I didn't have to go to school before. Why do I have to go now? It's important for you to get a good education, Twilight replied. Though it wasn't the whole truth. She, yeah, she felt it was important for Knox to go to school, but it was also part of her disguise. If she was going to school, it would be easier for ponies to believe that she was just an average unicorn filly and Twilight's cousin. Knox was also becoming just a little too clingy at the library. She had a thirst for knowledge that was almost unquenchable and Twilight hadn't been able to research the cult spell. She found Knox's curiosity wonderful and wanted to encourage it, but she needed to be able to work on her own studies as well, and maybe have a few hours to herself. Can I just stay at the library with you? Knox pleaded. The whole point of school is to learn new things, Twilight replied. You've been learning everything you can from me and Rarity, and you've been having a lot of fun. Now, you're just going to be learning from Charlie with the other fillies and colts instead. But, I know you and your friends, and I don't know Charlie. What if she's mean? Twilight chuckled, a little at Knox's fear. Don't worry, Charlie is very nice. Just pay attention in class and remember to follow the rules. That means both Chili's rules and my rules, which are, I can't take off my vest, I can't take off my glasses, I can't tell any pony about my wings or that I'm an alicorn, and I should try not to use my magic unless I'm writing something down. And try to make some friends, Twilight added, rubbing a hoof against Knox's head. With a yelp and a giggle, Knox battered at Twilight's hoof. Hoof before she escaped from the playful noogie. She then looked up at Twilight, curiosity glinting in her eyes. Are friends really that important? Trust me, nothing is more important than having a good friend. Than having good friends, Twilight said, taking a step forward as the school bell began to ring. Now, come on, if we keep stra standing here, you're going to be late. Good morning, class, Chili agreed in a sing-song voice as she stood at the front of the room. Good morning, Chili, 
Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Charlie. Or something of that nature, because I can't do multiple voices. At least not that well. The class echoed back. Some, honestly, others just to please the teacher. Now, before we get started, I have a small announcement. We have a new student joining us today. Her name is Knox, Shirley said, motioning to the filly standing next to her. I expect you all to welcome her as you would any new student. Yes, Shirley, the class chimed back. Shirley gave a pleased nod before turning to look at Knox. Good. Now, go ahead and find a seat. You can take any open desk you like. Knox nodded gently. As she looked out across the 16 desks, the class was sitting to one side of the room, leaving a column of empty desks, which had been added the previous evening on the left side. Knox looked at each seat, trying to decide which of the desks to claim as her own. Twilight had told her to sit as close to the front as possible. However, Knox didn't feel brave enough to sit in the very front, at least not on the first day. Knox eventually picked the desk second from the front, setting down her saddlebags before taking her seat. Directly to her right was an earth pony with a grayish magenta coat and a mane that was a mixture of white and violet. Knox couldn't help but notice she was wearing a tiara, very similar to the one she had for a cutie mark. It was only then that Knox realized the pony she was staring at was staring back, and not in a good way. The tiara-wearing pony wore an expression of annoyance, as if Knox's very presence offended her. Knox shrank away from the other filly, not sure what to do, but then she remembered what Twilight had told her she was supposed to try and make friends. Gathering what courage she could, Knox gave a very sheepish smile and gently waved her hoof, but the, <clears throat> but the tiara-wearing pony just humped and turned her head away, lifting her nose up a little. Yep, that's Diamond Tiara. Knox slumped in her seat at the dismissal and rested her head on the desk. She glanced at the other fillies and colts in class, but those who happened to be looking her way quickly turned their heads back to the front when she glanced in their direction. Frowning and turning her head towards the front, Knox watched Cheerley right on the chalkboard as her mind came to a single, solid, and in her opinion, undeniable conclusion. School was not going to be fun at all. School was amazing! Knox could only smile, horns shimmering as she took notes feverishly. Cheerley had started the day's lesson with some history, teaching about Ponyville's origins and traditions such as winter wrap-up and the running of the leaves. Now, are there any questions before we go to recess? Shirley asked, not expecting to see a hoof in the air. Her students were always more interested in taking their recess than they were in learning more, so Shirley couldn't help but smile when she saw a particular black hoof in the air and one she had been raised, one she had seen raised several times over the course of the morning. Yes, Knox, what's your question? How was, how was winter wrap-up done before the there were Pegasus ponies in Ponyville? That is a very good question, Knox, the teacher replied, pleased with her students' inquisitiveness. While it is tradition that magic isn't used to clean up winter, few ponies realize that back when the tradition started, there weren't any Pegasi around. So, how did they clean up the clouds and get the birds back? Well, if you don't mind getting to recess a little later than usual, I can tell you that originally the earth ponies in town, and Shirley was off, going a little deeper into her lecture than she had intended. Knox was happy and was already jotting down fresh notes. Her note-taking, however, was interrupted when something hit the side of her head. Looking down at the floor, she saw it was a piece of paper, and upon looking up, she saw a number of her classmates were glaring at her coldly. <laughs> uh. Under the unforgiving glares of classmates, Knox could only sink into her desk and whimper a little. She didn't know what she had done wrong. 
She had just asked a question. She was just curious. For me, it's actually kind of the opposite. Like, I ask a lot of questions and stuff. And, well, actually I don't ask that many. But I do most of the question answering when the teacher asks questions. So, I've actually been told by a teacher before, stop, like, just shooting your hand up instantly when you know the answer. Let people, like, actually think about it before you answer it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I have the tendency to avoid uh, trying to answer questions right off the bat. Anyways, boy, am I... Boy, am I glad to get outside. That was a terrible apple bloom voice, but... Boy, and am I... Wow, that sounds weird. Anywho, I'll just continue. Apple bloom said about 15 minutes later, when Shirley had finished talking about how Earth Ponies cleared the clouds. I was worried we wouldn't get to recess because of that question the new filly asked. But... It was pretty cool hearing how Earth Ponies were able to clear the skies and bring back the southern birds before there were Pegasi in town. Twist argue as she and Apple Bloom walked down the outside steps of the schoolhouse, hanging into the playground area. Yeah, it was cool, but I still rather have had recess. So what do you want to do? Twist pointed her hoof at the school's small sports field where several of their cl classmates were starting to kick a ball around. We could go play hoofball with Skulu and Sweetie Belle. Apple Bloom scrunched her nose up for a few minutes, but then shook her head. Nah, we played that all last week. You want to take turns on the swing then? Twist asked, pointing at the swing in question. Now nah, that sounds like a good idea, Apple Bloom replied as the pair began to trot towards the playground. Equipment. Twist arrived first and jumped onto the wooden swing set. Probably would do better if it was marked like. But anyways. Apple Bloom stood back to wait her turn. She watched Twist swing higher and higher. Her own smile growing as Twist reached impressive heights. It wasn't the highest Apple Bloom had seen some pony reach on the swing, but... It was still respectable. Hey, Twist called just before she reached the top of one of her forward swings. What is it? Apple Loom shouted back. I think Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara are talking to the new filly, Twist explained, saying a few bits of her sentence each time she swung by Apple Bloom. Turning her head, Apple Bloom looked in the direction the swing was facing and saw that the two school bullies had caught the new filly just as she was coming outside for recess. The three of them were talking on the schoolhouse steps, and by the looks of things, it wasn't a pleasant conversation. Is it ever a pleasant conversation with those two? What do you think they're talking about? Nothing good if I know those two, Apple Loom said before she took a step in that direction. Twist, you stay here a sec. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, Twist called out as she continued to swing, though she kept watch as her friend crossed the playground and drew closer to where Diamond Tierra, Silver Spoon, and the new filly were standing. So... Like we don't appreciate nerds, like you making us almost miss recess. That class is already so boring without you asking a bunch of questions. We get enough of that from Twist, don't we, Diamond Tierra? Yes, we do, Silver Spoon, but at least Twist is bearable. She also doesn't have an ugly coat like yours. Knox cringed and lowered her head as her ears flattened against her skull. She had been the last to get out of the schoolhouse for recess, mostly because she had to stop and ask Chili what recess was, 
Cheerley had been more than happy to answer, though. Knox hadn't been thrilled by the idea of having to go and play with the classmates she had just made angry. Her fears had then only been confirmed when the filly she sat next to in class and another filly, one with a gray coat and the spoon cutie mark, caught her within a few seconds of her stepping outside. Uh, ugly? was all she was able to stammer out under the ver filly's verbal be assault. Or singular, verbal assault. Or yeah, ugly, Diamond Tierra sneered. It's the absolute worst color. I would just die if I had a black coat. Silver Spoon nodded her head in agreement, scrunching up her nose in disgust. Me too. Not only is black like so ugly, but it's creepy too. Only things like spiders, bats, and ticks are supposed to be black. She probably actually likes bugs, Diamond Tierra added. Why, I bet she covered in ticks this very moment. Ew, Silver Spoon said, while sticking out her tongue. She and Diamond Tierra then began to smile devilishly as they chanted in union. Knox has ticks. Knox has ticks. Knox has ticks. I think they actually, uh, probably meant for it to be pronounced Nix, because that would have the rhyme Nix has ticks. But, and that's how it's spelled, but according to Wikipedia and my own research, it's pronounced Knox. So I'm sticking with Knox, even though Nix rhymes with ticks. I, I do not. Nick Knox whimpered in an attempt to defend herself, but Diamond Tierra and Silver Spoon's onslaught of chanting continued. Tears started to flow from her eyes, and the sight of her crying only fueled the sadistic mood of the two class bullies. Oh, look, she's crying, Diamond Tierra mocked with a fake sympathy. I didn't realize they let little foals come to school. Or maybe that's your lame special talent, crying. What special talent? She doesn't even have a cutie mark, Silver Spoon noted, pointing to Knox's blank flanks. Wow, I so didn't notice that before laughed Diamond Tierra before looking back at Knox. So not only are you a nerd, a creep, and a crybaby, but you're also a blank flank. You're like the biggest loser in the whole school. More like the biggest loser in Ponyville, Silver Spoon corrected, which only made Knox cry harder. However, before the two fillies could continue to taunt, tease, and torment Knox, Diamond Tierra was shoved from the side the sudden push sent her off balance, and both she and her namesake Tierra fell into the dirt. Oh my gosh, Tierra! Silver Spoon exclaimed as she looked to where Diamond Tierra had been standing moments before. A furious looking apple bloom was now standing in Diamond's place, and she was glaring down at the two schoolyard bullies. Like, you're going to be in so much trouble now, Apple Bloom. Chili says no fighting in school. Silver Spoon snapped at Apple Bloom. She helped Diamond Tierra off the ground. I'm going to tell Chili. Fine, go ahead, Apple Bloom snapped back. She didn't falter, even at the mention of her teacher's name. If you do that, then I'll tell her you were being mean. And you think she'll believe you? Diamond Tierra asked once she had gotten back up on her hooves. Apple Bloom nodded, her head firmly. Knox is crying, and Twist is watching the whole thing from over there on the swing. Is not, Diamond Tierra protested. Apple Bloom, however, just smirked and pointed a hoof behind her, where Twist, while still on the swings, was in fact watching what she was what was going on. <laughs> Silver Spoon grabbed Diamond Tierra's tiara and did her best to wipe the dirt off the treasured crown before giving it back to Diamond. Come on, this is like not worth our time getting in trouble for. Hmm, fine. 
You win this round, blank, blank. Have fun with your new friend and all of her ticks. Diamond Tear sneered before turning away. Let's get out of here, Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon stuck her tongue out at Apple Bloom as a final parting shot before she and Diamond Tear retreated. Apple Bloom watched the pair leave, and only when she was sure they were out of earshot did the huff and scrape. Wait, did the... oh, did she huff and scrape the ground with her hoof? Someday, I like to buck some sense into those two, just like my big sister would. She may have gotten in trouble at school, but you can bet your man she never got teased by the li likes of them. Apple Bloom finally lowered her guard. She blew a tuft of her mane out of her face and turned to look at Knox. You okay? Knox, who had watched the exchange between Apple Bloom, Diamond Tear, and Silver Spoon, nodded her head as she pulled herself up. She closed her eyes, carefully removed her glasses, and used a hoof to rub away the tears on her cheeks. She did not open her eyes again until her glasses were back where they belonged, perched squarely on her nose. Why are those two so mean? sniffled Knox. Personally, I think it's their special talents, and that they should have a bully cutie mark. But I guess it's kind of like having a special talent for arguing. There just isn't a cutie mark that really makes sense for being a bully. I'm Apple Bloom, by the way, the yellow filly said before she stuck out a hoof. Knox looked at the hoof for a bit, cautious of the kindness she was being shown after Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon's cruelty. Still, she eventually managed a weak smile as she reached out and gently shook it. I am Knox. Well, howdy, Twilight. What brings you around here, these here parts? Applejack greeted as she caught up to Twilight Sparkle, who was walking down an earthen path in Ponyville. Oh, hey, Applejack. I'm just on my way to the schoolhouse, Twilight replied. Well, that's just where I've been heading, Applejack said as she began to walk with Twilight. I'm picking up Apple Bloom from school today. Need her help running some errands in town. What about yourself? I'm picking up Knox. Knox, that cousin of yours? Applejack asked, surprised. Since when did that little filly start going to school? Today was her first day, actually. Applejack whistled. <whistles> the first one sounded kind of weird. Before glancing in Twilight's direction. First day of school is never easy, especially when you just move to a new place. Yeah, I remember the first day I transferred from my old school to Celestia's School for Gifted Unicorns, Twilight reminisced. It was scary, but I really didn't have to deal with a lot of other students being Princess Celestia's private pupil and all. Still, didn't this make that... Doesn't this mean Apple Bloom and Knox are in class together? Yep. Right along with Sweetie Belle and Skooloo. You think they're mad? Applejack asked. <laughs> that just sounded weird. <coughs> Twilight opened her mouth to reply, but at that moment, the school came into view. Just outside the schoolhouse's front door, Twilight saw a pair of fillies running and laughing merrily. It was a sight that made Twilight smile. I'd say they've more than just met. Applejack, Apple Bloom called out when she caught sight of her older sister. Soon she and Knox had scampered over to meet Twilight and Applejack, who were smiling down at the pair of young ponies. Hey, Apple Bloom, how was school today? Applejack asked. It was really fun, and I made a new friend. Apple Bloom said with a smile before motioning to Knox with her hoof. Applejack, this is Knox. Knox, this is my big sister, Applejack. Apple Bloom put on a big smile and looked back at Knox. She expected to see a similar expression, but instead found only confusion. Wait, your big sister is Applejack? 
You already know my big sister? Applebloom asked in return, reflecting Knox's confusion. She should, Applejack interrupted. Twilight block. <clears throat> Twilight brought Knox around the orchards yesterday. Why would she do that? Alpaloom asked, cocking her head to one side. Because Knox is my cousin, and she's staying with me at the library while she's here in Ponyville. Twilight answered with a simple, with her simple eye. Whoa, that's cool, Applebloom said excitedly. Did you know Twilight once beat an Ursa Minor all by herself? Knox's eyes went wide. And she looked up at Twilight with a mouth agape. You did? Well, yes, but I wouldn't really call what I did beating it, Twilight clarified modestly. The Ursa Mina was just cranky from being woken up, so I gave it some milk and rocked it to sleep. But it still was really cool, Apple Bloom reassured Knox. So, did anything else happen at school today? Twilight asked, trying to steer the conversation away from her victory over the Ursa Minor. Well, some of the other fillies in class were mean to me, and Shirley wanted me to give you something, Knox said, with her horn glowing. She clicked to open the latch on her saddlebag and pulled out a note. Twilight quickly took the note into her own magic and lifted it to her face so she could read it. What does it say? Did Knox do something bad? Apple Bloom asked. Her only experience with teacher's notes being referrals for bad behavior. No, it's just Shirley asking me to make sure Knox knows about some subjects since she's starting part way through the school year. Applejack leaned to one side and whistled while she read the note over Twilight's shoulder. That ain't just some subjects, Twy. That's a lot of book learning Knox has to catch up on. Yes, but with my help, I'm sure we'll get through it really quickly, Twilight said confidently as she rolled up the note and put it back into Knox's saddlebag. We'll of course start right away. We could probably get through basic mathematics this afternoon if we really hit it hard. Aww, Apple Bloom muttered in disappointment. What's the matter, Sugar Cube? I wanted to ask Knox if she wanted to join the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I'm meeting Skulu and Sweetie Belle this afternoon, so we can try and find her Cutie Marks. Knox doesn't have hers either, so I thought she might like to come along. Well, how about you let Knox go get some learning done? Well, <clears throat> let me try again. Well, how about you let Knox get some learning done with Twilight, and then you and her, your friends can go find her in... Did you get that? Okay. Well, how about you... Well, how about you let Knox get some learning done with Twilight, and then you and your friends can go find her at the library later, Applejack suggested. Before she glanced over at Twilight, that is, of course, if it's okay with you, Twa. Twilight opened her mouth to answer, but before she could, she saw Apple Bloom and Knox looking up at her. The pair of them were putting on their biggest, most pleading puppy dog eyes and smiles they could muster, and Twilight couldn't help but giggle. She nodded, causing a pair of cheers to erupt from the two young fillies. Diamond Tiara groaned as she dropped her face into her open books. She glared Claude. <clears throat> well, now nah, I'll leave that in just for special effects. But yeah, that's kind of why I was stumbling there. It's because I had to burp. Should have just burped it. Ah. Uh, Diamond Tara groaned as she dropped her face into her open book. She glared coldly at the letters on the page. Even though she'd rather be focusing on her glare on her newest classmate, Knox had just asked another question right now before recess, and now Shirley was continuing to lecture past class time. Thankfully, the answer to Knox's question was short, and the fillies and colts of the school were soon free. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
were soon free to run and play outside. Knox rushed out with Apple Bloom and Twist, and the three ran to meet Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo near some of her school playground equipment. Diamond Tear, on the other hoof, lingered near the schoolhouse and watched Knox as she waited for a silver spoon to get outside. Hey there, Diamond Tear. How boring was that lesson? Totally boring, and Knox just couldn't keep her mouth shut and had to ask another one of her dumb questions. Like, I don't know what's wrong with her. It's like, she actually likes school. Total egg hay. Silver Spoon agreed. She's been like this since she started class like two weeks ago. I don't know why she keeps doing it like every pony else has to hate her as much as we do. Her only friends are those three blank flanks and that other nerd twist. Some pony needs to teach her a lesson about being a ner being so nerdy. Silver Spoon then smiled with an idea popped into her head. Hey, you want to put gum on her chair? No, that won't do it. It might make her cry, but not much else. No, if we're going to, going to prank her, it needs to be a prank that the teacher, that teaches her to not be so curious. Diamond Tiara said. She shifted her gaze away from Knox, searching for some inspiration for the perfect prank. She looked at the other classmates playing at the playground equipment. And then her gaze shifted to the forest in the distance. Diamond began to smile devilishly. Oh, that's too... Oh, that is too perfect. What is? Silver Spoon asked. Diamond Tiara motioned for Silver Spoon to get close before she started whispering. <laughs> in her friend's ear. Still, as Diamond Tiara explained the idea, Silver Spoon's smile weakened. I don't know, Diamond. It's a good idea, but what if something happens to her? We could get in trouble. It's a great idea, Diamond corrected, and it will teach Knox a lesson. Besides, she'll be in there for like ten minutes before she turns around and runs away like a crying baby. <coughs> crying like a baby. <laughs> Gotta love doing it like no editing. Oh yeah. You can just burp and be like, yep, that stays. Mm hmm <laughs> I should probably say pardon. Or excuse me, or whatever you want to hear. Just like, pretend that I said it. Because it will help quite a bit. Maybe. Anywho, Silver Spoon bit her lip for a moment, and then smiled and nodded. Okay, let's do it. Bump, bump, sugar. Bump, bump, sugar lump, rump, the pair said in unison, doing their strange special hoof shake before they laughed and strolled off to set their plane in motion. Knock, 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 or... Coming! Twilight set down the book she had been holding and trod towards the library door. She had been organizing a few books while Knox worked on some math problems as part of Twilight's efforts to catch her up with the rest of her class. Knox was currently sticking her tongue out and scratching her head as she tried to solve one particularly difficult problem. Knox, Twilight called from the door. Knox looked up from her math board sheet. Twilight had made her and called back. Yeah, Twilight? Ah, uh, what? Where did I get? Never mind. There are a couple of your friends from school here. Do you want to take a break and go play with them? Knox was at the door in a flash, expecting Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, Sweetie Belle, or Twist. But her smile quickly withered when she saw it was Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon standing on the library's doorstep. Hey, Knox, we were just going to Sugar Cube Corner to get a snack. You want to come with? Diamond Tiara offered with a big friendly smile. I... I really shouldn't, Knox said. I got a lot of studying to do. Oh, nonsense, Twilight said, using a leg to push Knox out the door. She fetched Knox's saddlebags and put a few bits into the right pouch. Go have a break with your friends. 
Oh, and can you bring me back a sugar cookie too? Pinkie Pie was bragging about how the sugar cupie Sugar cookies? Well, no, no. Sugar cookies she made this morning are her best ever, and I was hoping to try one. But, but, Knox stammered, but before she could say anything else, she was outside and the door to the library had been shut behind her. Knox lowered her head and looked at the two other fillies, afraid of what they would say to her. But rather than insult her, Diamond Tara and Silver Spoon continued to smile. First, I would like to say Silver Spoon and I are sorry for being so mean. Knox raised her head and made no effort to hide the expression of confusion and surprise that formed on her face. You, you do? Diamond Tara nodded and motioned with a hoof. The trio began to walk down the street in the direction of Sugar Cube Corner. While they continued to talk. Yeah, like, we thought about what we did and we're so sorry we did it. It's not easy being the new kid in town. And it was wrong of us to mean, to be mean to you like that. Oh, um, that's okay. I forgive you. Knox said with a weak smile as she walked between Diamond and Silver. Spoon, you two did say a lot of mean things though. We know, and we feel really bad, but, like, we got to make s such new ponies. Sure, the new ponies in town are cool, Silver Spoon said, as if judging a pony's coolness was their job. So, all that was a test? Yes, assured Diamond Tara, and you pass. Congratulations. But how is saying I have ticks a test? Knox asked. Focusing her questioning gaze on Diamond Tiara. There was a moment of pause from Diamond, who smiled weakly while she glanced anxiously at Silver Spoon. Like, uh, Silver Spoon interrupted. We wanted to make sure you actually cared about being covered in ticks. That way, we would know whether or not you cared about being clean. Well, of course, what kind of pony would actually like being covered in ticks? Knox asked. A pony that's like a real weirdo, Diamond Tiara answered, jumping back into the conversation after a silver spoon's rescue. And you're obviously not a weirdo because you do care. Still, we are like sorry we made you cry. We just had to be sure you like are a cool pony. And am I a cool pony? Knox asked anxiously. Silver Spoon nodded, like, totally cool, and that's why we, like, wanted to be friends, like, friends with you. Really? Nux asked with a grin. Twilight often spoke of the importance of friendship over the two weeks since Nox had started school, and Nox was excited by the prospect of extending her circle of friends. Oh yeah, like, we can, like, be total BFFs. Silver Spoon assured eagerly. What's that? Knox asked as she continued to walk with the other two fillies. BFFs? Best friends forever? Diamond Tear explained. Oh, and just so you like know, Black is so totally cool. Knox's eyes lit up and her, eye, and her smile widened. It is? Like, coolest color ever. It makes you... Unique, even if you don't, like, have a cutie mark. Yet. <laughs> Feel like I have to add like to keep the voice. <laughs> uh -uh. Silver Spoon assured. Totally, like, cool. Diamond Tara agreed. Well, thanks. I'm glad we can be friends. Knox said with a wide smile. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon smiled as well, but they also winked at each other behind Knox's back began to snicker. What's so funny? Oh, nothing. Just thinking of a joke Silver Spoon told me. Diamond Tear assured. Knox, now let's go get those sweets. Really? Knox asked in disbelief. In disbelief. <laughs> uh. Really? Knox asked in disbelief as she sat with Silver Spoon and Diamond Tear. Just outside Sugar Cube Corner, 
Knox levitated the food to her mouth, doing her best to remember all the lessons on being a proper mare Rarity had taught her as she ate her snack. <clears throat> Pardon. Since Diamond Tierra and Silver Spoon seemed to be the kind of fillies that would care about that sort of thing. Oh yes, the Everfree Forest really is amazing once you go deep enough inside. Diamond Tierra reassured Knox. She and Silver Spoon had just spent the last half an hour convincing Knox that once you got by the scary trees on the forest edge, it became a beautiful place filled with all sorts of gentle animals, babbling brooks, and huge fields of flower. To Knox, it sounded like the best place ever. But I've been in the Everfree Forest with Twilight, and I never saw anything like that. You must not have gone deep enough, Silver Spoon answered quickly, brushing off Knox's comment. Uh-oh. She's been in the Everfree Forest before, as we all know, which means this is going to send her super deep. Still, you, like, don't know what you're missing. It is, like, so beautiful, Diamond Tear said before perking up with a smile. Hey, we should all go together. I, I don't know, Knox said nervously. I've been in there, and it's really scary. Twilight told me to never go back in there because of all the monsters. Look, there's nothing to be afraid of, Silver Spoon insisted. The path is, like, enchanted or something. You stay on it, and the monsters will leave you alone. Oh, well, that's good, but Knox hesitantly rubbed her forelegs together and glanced over her shoulder. Twilight's expecting me back at the library. Oh, don't worry, Silver Spoon and I will go tell her where we're going. Diamond reached into her saddlebag and pulled out a map and rolled it flat on the table. A red dotted line had been drawn on the map, leading deep into the Everfree Force. Just follow this and you'll get to the really beautiful part of the woods. We'll be right behind you. Knox eyed the pair for a second and then looked down at the map, biting her lower lips. I think I see where this could possibly be going, but I may or may not spoil it. Still, when she looked up and saw the very gentle and excited looks on Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, she couldn't help but smile. Knox picked up the map with her magic and stuck it into her saddlebags. She took out some of the bits Twilight had given her. Well, okay, I'll see you there, but could you take Twilight a sugar cookie when you go to tell her where we're going? Of course, Silver Spoon said, taking the bits and standing up from the table. I'll go buy the sugar cookie right now. Yeah, we'll go tell Twilight. You just go ahead, BFF. Knox nodded, jumping down from the table, trotting off in the direction of the forest. Diamond Tierra smiled. Watched Knox until she had rounded a corner, and then burst out in laughter. Diamond Tierra laughed until Silver Spoon came back out of Sugar Cube Corner, carrying two freshly purchased cookies. Oh, that was too easy, Silver Spoon nodded, offering one of the cookies to Diamond Tierra. Yeah, like, and we, like, got free cookies out of the deal. This, Silver Spoon, was our best prank ever. Holy, Silver Spoon replied before the pair hoofed and began to enjoy their ill-gotten sweets. Twilight trod through the streets of Ponyville as anxiously as she anxiously looked around. She hadn't seen Knox in two hours and was starting to worry. She hadn't been able to find her two, her or the two fillies that had come to play with her for the moment. She was willing to believe they had just gotten caught up in playing and lost track of time. Trotting into the market, Twilight looked around but still saw no sign of Knox. She did, however, catch sight of Applejack. Applejack was tending her market while she stood... Oh, her market. Derp. <laughs> 
Applejack was tending her market stand. Not stood. Market stand. <laughs> While keeping an eye on Apple Bloom, Scooby and Sweetie Belle. Who were trying to balance on top of each other a few feet away. Twilight could only guess the trio were making another attempt to get their cutie marks. But she didn't have time to try and figure out what they were doing. Hey Applejack. Hey there sugar cube. Applejack greeted as Twilight tried up to her market cart. What can I fix you for? Want some red delicious gala? Or maybe some granny smith apples? Applejack, you haven't seen Knox, have you? Applejack cocked her head to the side. Knox, why no, I haven't. Is she missing? I, I don't know, Twilight fretted as she glanced about. Two fillies from her class came to see if she could play. That was hours ago, and I'm starting to worry. Applejack chuckled, her eyes drifting over to Apple Bloom for a moment. Oh, Twilight, I'm sure you got nothing to worry yourself about. You know Philly's that age. They're probably just off playing. I know, but it's b had been two hours. What two Phillies came to play with Knox? Apple Bloom asked. She and her friends walked up to the mares, having overheard the conversation. I don't know their names, but one was gray with spoon cutie mark and a braid in her mane, and the other had a tiara. Diamond tiara and silver spoon? Knox went to play with them? Apple Bloom exclaimed, her voice carrying undertones of concern. Yes, is that bad? Twilight asked, her concern increasing from the filly's tone. Twilight, those two are bullies. Don't you remember how they made fun of me, called me a blank flank at Diamond Tiara Skitty Sin Maria? Cutie Sinria. Uh, her eyes grew wide, the memory of that day causing her to stagger. She did remember those two fillies. They had been teasing Apple Bloom about not having a cutie mark. She hadn't recognized them without their party dresses. Oh, and she hadn't spoken or really seen that much of them in a la year at least. Girls, Applejack began being the... Getting the attention of the three fillies, I reckon you three better help Twilight find those two. Do you know where they like to hang out? I know where Silverspoon lives, Sweetie Belle chimed. Rarity does a lot of business with her father, and sometimes when I go with her, I see Diamond Tiara and Silverspoon doing their homework at Silverspoon's house. Applejack nodded and began to look up her app, lock up her apple cart. All right then, Sweetie Belle, you show Twilight where the Silver Spoon lives and see if they're there. Apple Bloom, Skulu, y'all can come with me and we'll go see if we're there over at Filthy Rich's store. <laughs> Twilight and the three fillies nod their heads, and soon the quintet of ponies had raced off in hopes of finding Knox safe and sound. Knox shakily took out the map Diamond Tiara had given her, and checked it over before looking up at the dark, foreboding path ahead. She didn't know how far the path, how far along the path she was, but the line on the paper said she still had to keep going. The line crossed a river, and Knox could hear the babbling of a, bobbling of a stream just ahead of her. Still, after she rounded a corner, Knox let out a small panic. Yelp before she ducked behind a tree. Just in front of her, a giant purple sea serpent was splashing around in the water. Purple sea serpent, who oddly had well-styled orange hair, was in the process of eating some rough gemstones he had gathered from the riverbed. Knox wasn't certain the serpent wouldn't turn down his gemstones to eat a little pony, so she decided to stay hidden and wait until he left. Uh... Twilight and Sweetie Belle was unable to find any pony at Sweet Silver Spoon's house and Applejack. Apple Bloom and Skooloo were really just unsuccess were just as unsuccessful. Wow, I'm really stumbling. Stumble stumble. 
Tô pegando a delay. Diamond Tear, Silver Spoon, and Knox were simply nowhere to be found, and Twilight was officially starting to panic. The search quickly expanded. Applejack and Apple Bloom asked ponies around the market if they had seen the trio of fillies. Sweetie Belle ran to get Rarity, while Scooloo used her scooter to quickly race out of Ponyville to where Rainbow Dash had practiced was practicing tricks. That left Twilight to continue to run around Ponyville, trying to find Knox and two fillies she had left and two fillies she had last been seen with. She asked any pony she came across, growing more frantic as more time passed. Where were they? Where was Knox? Twilight Looking skyward, Twilight saw Rainbow Dash circling around her. I found them. This way. I'm right behind you, Twilight shouted as Rainbow Dash before... Rainbow Dash before calling on her. Ah, shout to Rainbow Dash before calling on her magic. Right, right. With a flash and a pop, she used her teleportation spell to move to a nearby roof. She kept teleporting between rooftops, following Rainbow Dash until they arrived at the edge of a park. Where are they? Rainbow Dash pointed with her hoof to a park bench, on which Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were chatting and making fun of ponies walking by. <laughs> Twilight was a little disheartened because it didn't look like Knox was with them, but she kept herself focused on the task at hoof. Rainbow, find the others. Have them meet in the town square, just in case we have to find Knox, while I see what these two know. You got it. Rainbow Dash assured her before she sped off to gather all the others. Twilight watched her friends leave, and before turning her eyes on the park bench, Sweetie Belle had told her now her how mean the two bullies could be while they were looking for them at Silver Spoon's house. She had also been told of how cruel the pair had been to Knox on her first day. She wanted to scream, but Twilight forced herself to smile gently. As the old saying went, catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Yep, Ed. It's probably better that you're not like, you know, I'll torture the information out of them. Although, it would probably do better than just asking sweetly. <laughs> and it would be more fun for me. I'm not sadistic at all. Really, I'm not. Okay, maybe a little bit, but... Yes. Excuse me, Twilight said sweetly to Diamond Tear and Silver Spoon as she approached the bench. You two wouldn't happen to know... Diamond Tiara glanced over at Twilight Sparkle like she was regarding an ant before she turned back to Silver Spoon and began to speak as if Twilight wasn't there. Oh look, Silver Spoon, it's the town librarian. What, trying to find ponies that have overdue books? No, actually, Twilight said sweetly, though she was struggling to maintain her kind demeanor. I was wondering if you two know where Knox is. The last I saw her, she was going with you two to Sugar Cube Corner, and I haven't seen her for a few hours. Wait, she isn't, Silver Spoon tried to ask, only to yelp and promptly fall silent when Diamond Tear stepped on her hoof. Diamond Tear looked back at Twilight with a sympathetic grin. Knox? We don't know any Knox, do we, Silver Spoon? Silver Spoon continued to rub her hoof, but shook her head. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Twilight chuckled under her breath. <sighs> uh, she's going to have so much fun in her laboratory. I mean, it was the kind of chuckle some pony made when they were doing their very best to keep their anger in check. Now, girls, we all know that isn't true. You came to the library earlier to play with Knox, my cousin. You know she has a black coat and wears a vest. 
Sounds like a real nerd to me, Diamond Terra commented. And we never hang out with ugly nerds, do we, Silver Spoon? Silver Spoon laughed weakly, withering under Twilight's intense glare. No, we don't. No, girls, Twilight said through gritted teeth. I know you. Diamond Terra leapt down from the park bench and turned her nose up away from Twilight. Come on, Silver Spoon. Let's uh, get out of here before she, uh, like, tries to make us read a book or something. A uh, diamond? Silver Spoon stammered as she pointed a hoof at Twilight. Diamond Tierra turned her head back, confused, as Twire friend was suddenly scared. Fear quickly sprang up in her own chest when her eyes fell on Twilight. While reports of such things are rare, some books have recorded of expe exceptionality magically inclined unicorns performing something called a rage shift. <laughs> Twilight had studied it closely, especially after going through her own rage shift for the first time when she was trying to understand Pinkie Pie's sixth sense. The book she had read said that the shift occurs when a unicorn's anger feeds into the magic to cause a physical change to the unicorn's body. And in that moment, Twilight had rage shifted for the second time in her life, with her mane and tail set ablaze by her magic, with her eyes burning red, and with her coat a bright, angry white. Twilight glared down at Diamond Tiara, like she was a pony of the apocalypse. Thus Twilight evolved. Unless you want to turn, unless you want me to turn you two into cacti, you will tell me where Knox is right now. She's in the Everfree Forest, Silver Spoon squeaked out in fear. We, we told her that the forest got really nice if you go deep enough and gave her a map. She left from Sugar Keep Corner and that's the last we saw of her. Twilight's raid shift ended. Her mane, tail, and coat returned to normal well. Her eyes narrowed into pinpoints. Then, without another word to the fillies, Twilight spun on her hoofs and galloped back towards the center of Ponyville, where Rainbow Dash would be gathering her friends. It would be dark soon, and the Everfree Force only got more dangerous in the dark. Knox trembled, just barely keeping herself moving without crying. The growing darkness had made the force very, very scary. She looked around anxiously, watching the many long shadows that surrounded her, seeing things that may or may not have been there. Still, Knox counted in a small miracle that she couldn't see at all. The moon was three quarters full, providing just enough light to see the path ahead. Oh, that she could see at all. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought of something. She just passed the river with the purple sea dragon, who's very gentlemanly-like, and yeah. Uh, but anyways, maybe they're sending her to the castle. I could totally see that. There's a plot twist, or... Oh, a plot twist. Ugh. Nox had been given up on trying to find a nice part of the forest. Now all she wanted to do was get back to Ponyville. But she had lost her map. A rustling in the bushes had startled her earlier, and when she ran, she had left the map behind. Now she was wandering around aimlessly, hoping to recognize some landmark. She tried to follow familiar paths, one she thought she had traversed before, but she hadn't crossed the river again. It was the one landmark Knox was desperately hoping to see, even if the sea serpent had returned. Trust me, you're better off with the sea serpent. <laughs> Following a bend in the path, Knox came to a stop. Before her stood, in curling mist, a creaky rope bridge hung over a deep expanse. It groaned as it shifted gently from side to side, nudged by small breezes. Beyond the bridge, on the far side of the gorge, was the ruins of an ancient castle that had been long forgotten and partially overtaken by the Everfree Forest. 
Nox knew she hadn't passed by a castle on her way into the forest, and yet it was strangely familiar. Curiosity started to replace fear. Nox carefully stepped out onto the bridge. Thankfully, none of the wooden planks gave way under the weight of her small body. She was able to cross to the far side without incident. As Nox approached and looked up at the long-forgotten castle, something began to bubble up in her mem in her mind. She tried to force whatever it was away, tried to clear her mind, but the blurry images and voices persisted, playing out inside her head. Oh, my beloved subjects, it's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. What did you do with our princess? Whoa, Nelly there. Whoa there, Nelly. Why, am I not royal enough for you? Don't you know who I am? Oh, oh, more guessing games, uh, Hokey Smokey. How about Queenie, Queen Meanie? No, Black Snooty, Black Snooty. Does my crown no longer count now that I have been in prison for a thousand years? Did you not recall the legend? Did you not see the signs? I did, and I know who you are. You're the mare in the moon, Nightmare Moon. Well, 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 some pony who remembers me. Then you also know why I'm here. You're here to, to remember this day, little ponies, for it was your last. From this moment, moment forward, moment forth, the night will last forever. <laughs> Nox shook her head, finally managing to banish the blurred thoughts that had overtaken her. She had recognized some of the voices. She had heard Twilight, but there was a voice she shouldn't have recognized, but did. The voice of the older mare, the one who laughed at the end. It was a voice that Nox felt she kind of remembered, but she couldn't think of who it belonged to. Putting the strange occurrence out of her mind, she began to climb the steps to the castle. She didn't know why, but she had to see inside, no matter how scary the Everfree Forest was. It was as if the castle was calling out to her. She climbed steps, navigated old hallways, and en eventually entered the one remaining tower. There was no defining features to the room, which had suffered under the passage of time, but Knox recognized that it was the place Palace's throne room, and it felt like she's been here before. Nox stepped into the center of the room, looking up at the broken glass windows at the far end. She winced in pain, images bursting to the front of her mind. These were far more aggressive than the images from before, and they were much clearer. They would not be ignored and they shoved all of the thoughts off Nox's mind as they demanded attention. ATTENTION! She, she realized they were memories that she could remember standing at the far end of the room, looking down across it. In memory, she was looking down at a purple, small purple unicorn. A unicorn she knew, Twilight. You little fools think you could defeat me? Now you will never see your princess or your son. The night will last forever. Nox could remember herself saying those words. She could remember thinking them. But even worse, she could remember the feelings behind those thoughts. She wanted to hurt Twilight. To punish Twilight for trying to thwart her. She was thinking about banishing her, imprisoning her, even torturing her. Nox struggled against the memory. No, she wouldn't want to hurt Twilight. Twilight was the kindest pony she knew. It was Twilight who took care of her, who taught her, who read to her sleep at, who read her to sleep at night. It was Twilight that had found her in the forest. She didn't want to hurt Twilight. Dark shadows shifted around the room, dispelled magic that had lain dormant now being awakened by Nox's presence. Trails of indigo smoke began to creep towards Nox, and as magic seeped into her, the memories continued. She saw Twilight and her 
with her friends, saw Twilight giving a long speech about almonds. And then there was a bright light, a light so bright that it hurt to look at it. She had to shield herself from the light with her wing. And then, then there was a rainbow. But not a nice, pretty rainbow. No, the rainbow lunged at her like an angry snake and circled her, and it burned. It was burning her away, tearing her away from something else. It was like a savage animal with razor-sharp claws and rah, teeth. And <laughs> it tore her to ribbons despite her cries. Then the memory faded and stopped, as if the rainbow had caused her to simply not exist anymore. Nox collapsed on the floor of the castle, panting, panting heavily as the memory finally relented. Despite the cool feeling of the castle's stone floor, she could still feel the burning pain of the rainbow, how it had cut and torn at her. Other thoughts began to bubble to the surface, as more and more the indigo smoke drew in from the room. And into Knox. The thoughts were desires, hateful desires. Desires to hurt ponies, to make them pay for ignoring her. Memories of being scorned and ignored. Memories of jealousy and anguish. Among these thoughts, a few began to stand out and mingle with Knox's memories of her friends in Twilight. They began to poison those memories, filling them with hatred. They, she wanted to hurt Twilight. She wanted to make her suffer, to torture her. These were thoughts that Knox didn't want to have. She clapped her hooves against the side of her head and shouted at the castle, silence. No, I don't want to hurt Twilight. She takes care of me, teaches me, and lets me go to school. I don't want to hurt her. Despite her cries, the thoughts relentlessly continued. She thought of how she would hurt Twilight, and how she would torture her. She snap off her horn, keep her locked in a dungeon, and other horrible things that started to make Knox physically ill. No, Knox cried to the silence. I don't want to hurt Twilight. I don't want to. The thoughts were reaching a boil as Knox tried to push them away. More rose in their place, thoughts of how she'd hurt Twilight's friends, how she'd go after Twilight's family. She just kept thinking of all the ways she could break Twilight's spirit. No, 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 no! With the final scream, something sparked to life inside Knox, and her eyes glowed white. The creeping tendrils of indigo smoke suddenly shifted, swirling faster and faster as they were sucked down into her like water in a whirlpool. Whoa, she's absorbing all the evil energy and making it a part of her. At the same time, the dark desires in her mind began to fade, ebbing away as more and more of the smoky tendrils were absorbed. Then, when the last traces of the smoke were... Traces of the cloud were gone, Nox's horn sparked and sent a crack of lightning, lancing up into the sky with the thunderous boom. Not going to make me do the thunder sound. <laughs> Celestia bolted in bed and turned her eyes to her window, though through which she could see Ponyville in the Everfree Forest. Her breathing was still, and her ears turned forward in erect attention. Like a pony hearing an unexplained thump in her home at night. For a moment, Celestia had felt something in Questria that did not belong. She stretched out her magic senses, trying to find the presence she had detected, but it was already gone. It had felt like, no, that wasn't impossible. She could sense Luna in the castle in the main hall. Yet, Celestia could not get over what she had felt. It was short-lived, but... She had sensed her presence, presence she hoped to never sense again. In another part of Cantalot, a dark blue unicorn with turquoise eyes was sitting in the study with a crack of lightning 
from the ever-free forest lit up the room. With the light came a surge of magic, which drew the unicorn's gaze from the book he was reading to a window. He listened to the thunder that trailed, and even after it had passed, he continued to stare through his window at the distant ever-free forest. He then shut the book he had been reading, a rare tome on theoretical resurrection magic, and shouted into the silence of his home, PROPER ETIQUETTE! That's a weird thing to shout. <laughs> the doors to the study opened within moments, and an all-white unicorn with a fabric collar and tie stepped into the room. He adjusted his monocle, and that was over his right eye, and looked across the room with his own turquoise eyes. He called, sir. Ah, that's the name of the character. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought it was some sort of magic spell. <laughs> it's like, proper etiquette, what the? <laughs> but no, it's the name of the character. <laughs> Have messages sent to Miss Greygale, Miss Nightwind, and Mr. Stonewall. I need to speak with them this evening, if possible. Of course, sir. I will have them summoned. Twilight cried out, tripping over her own hoofs, as she landed in a heap on the side of the path. She and her friends had been racing through the Everfree Forest when a bolt of lightning launched into the sky. Twilight had been in the lead galloping as quickly as her legs would carry her, and when she heard the thunder and tripped, Rarity and Fluttershy quickly galloped up to assist Twilight, while the others were transfixed skyward, where they had just seen the bolt of magic. Whoa, did you see that? Rainbow Dash asked. Applejack nodded and tilted her head back, so she could have a better look at the sky. Sure did, Sugar Cube. Where do you reckon it came from? Oh, the Everfree Forest, Pinkie Pie chirped. Well, no duh, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash pointed out. We're kind of in the Everfree Forest. Of course, silly. That's how I knew the lightning bolt came from here. Dash slapped a hoof to her forehead while Twilight struggled to her hoofs with Rarity and Fluttershy's help. Twilight, dear, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I just tripped. Twilight assured, pushing her friend away as her horn glued. The group had momentarily just stopped just momentarily as the library before heading into the forest to get a compass and a map. Pinkie Pie had volunteered to carry the map in her curly mane, while the compass hung from Twilight's neck by a thin piece of string. Twilight drew out both items levitating them in the air as she looked skyward. Okay, Twilight began, taking a breath to calm herself. Where was that lightning bolt again? Right over there, Pinkie Pie answered, pointing at the sky with her hooves. Twilight quickly positioned herself by Pinkie Pie, holding up the compass as she turned the map over in the air. Okay, using the mountains as a reference, we're about here. Now, if we're here and the lightning bolt was there... And how long would you say it was between the lightning flash and thunder? A second, maybe two tops, Rainbow Dash answered. Of course, Rainbow Dash, she knows the most about weather and would actually count that. Besides Twilight, of course. Twilight nodded and, making very rough calculations in her head, began to move her hoof across the map. All right, then. The lightning came from Twilight fell silent. Staring at the map, she double-checked her rough measures and guesses, but in the pit of her stomach, she knew she was right. I I know where Knox is, Twilight said, dropping the map and compass in the mud. I need to get to her right now. But Sugar Cube, how do you... Applejack began to ask, only to be cut off as a bright light enveloped Twilight as she teleported her way. Twilight finished her teleportation spell and waited for the magic in the air to settle from her arrival before she opened her eyes. 
and looked around. She was in a room she had been, not been in since the summer sun celebration two years ago. The throne room in the ancient castle of the royal, of the royal pony sisters. It was where she and her friends had defeated Nightmare Moon. <coughs> yes, perfectly timed, Bert. Hurrah! Not really. Anywho, where she and her friend, friends, uh, had defeated Nightmare Moon, and the room was just as Twilight remembered. It, except for a single small detail, Knox was lying in the center of the room, and for a moment a wave of relief began to wash over her. That relief, however, received like the tide from the shore, and was quickly replaced by a powerful, gripping fear that threatened to squeeze the very air from her chest. Knox's normal mane and tail had been replaced with flowing masses of star-dyed magic. Knox was now a truly Nightmare Moon's doppelganger. All she lacked was the armor, the eye shading, and Nightmare Moon's cutie mark. This, this was Twilight's fear made real. With the main, with that mane and tail, could she deny the truth any longer? Could she honestly believe that the cultist spell had not accomplished its intended purpose? Knox was young, but there was no denying that she was crying. Knox's wails filled Twilight's ears, derailing her train of thought. She was bawling her eyes out, and Twilight had to catch herself. She had already taken a few steps forward because of her desire to comfort Knox, to tell her everything was okay. Knox was terrified, more so than she had been the night Twilight found her. Still, Twilight held herself back, as her mind rebelled against itself. She couldn't dismiss Knox's resemblance to Nightmare Moon, especially now that Knox had the mane and tail the Mare and the Moon was infamous for. Yet, would Nightmare Moon be crying like that? Would she be ra wailing so loudly? Unable to bear it any more, Twilight inched towards Knox. She approached the filly as she would a slumbering Earth Major, as if the sobbing form could... Before the sobbing form before her could turn around and maul her to death at any second. Twilight pushed forward. When she was close enough, she reached out at Knox and nudged her with a hoof. Knox spun her head around at the touch, a frightened look in her eyes. That fear, however, died almost immediately when she saw Twilight. She scrambled to her hooves and buried her head in Twilight's chest, bawling. I'm sorry. Shh, it's okay, it's okay, Twilight reassured cautiously, wrapping her hooves around Knox's trembling form. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please don't hate me. Please, I don't want to hurt you, Knox wailed into Twilight's chest, her voice muffled. Twilight's heart skipped a beat, but she fought the urge to pull away. Hurt me? When did you want to? I, I don't know, Knox sobbed miserably. I came in here and then and then I remember looking down on you. We were both here and you looked so scared. And I was happy to see you were scared. And and I wanted to hurt you because you tried to stop me from doing something. But I don't want to hurt you. Twilight, please, please don't hate me. I don't want to hurt you. Twilight felt a tension in her chest. Physical manifestation of her inner conflict. Knox wasn't crying because she was scared of the castle or the forest. She was crying because she felt she had done something horrible, and she was apologizing for it. Apologizing for things Nightmare Moon had done, had thought, had felt. It worried Twilight because if Knox had Nightmare Moon's memories, it was almost conclusive evidence that the two were one and the same. Yet, as Twilight looked at the filly crying into her neck, she was no longer able to see Nightmare Moon, and made her realize how close she had grown to Knox. She had only taken Knox into her home originally to keep an eye on her, to make sure she knew where the possible reincarnation of Nightmare Moon was at all time. That was it. 
She was never supposed to bond with Knox. She had intended to only be a caretaker and observer, but things had changed so quickly. She needed a way to get Knox to sleep at night, so she started reading her bedtime stories. She saw Knox struggling with homework, so she sat down and helped her. Knox came to her asking questions, and through their conversations, Twilight had grown to know Knox as a filly. She was a filly who loved the sun and had friends and was curious about the world around her. That familiarity had bred care. Twilight cared about Knox. She wanted her to get a good night's sleep, to do well in school and ask questions. She wanted Knox to be safe. Twilight still wasn't sure who Knox was or how much, if anything, she shared with Nightmare Moon beyond the physical similarities. She did, however, know one thing. Knox was crying in terror of her own memories, and Twilight couldn't ignore Knox's wails. I know you don't, Twilight finally comforted, hooking a leg around Knox and hugging the filly as tightly as she could. It's okay. I know you don't want to hurt me. Twilight's words, however, were not enough to soothe Knox. She continued to cry and beg for forgiveness, and again and again Twilight said it was okay. Twilight did not force Knox to stop. Even though her mane and tail had returned to normal, Knox needed to cry to get it all out. She had remembered something terrible, something she couldn't understand, and she just needed Twilight to be there to assure her everything was okay to protect Knox from her memories. And that was the end of Nightmare ah, of Past Sins Chapter 3, School Days and Memories. Wow, I felt like a long chapter. Huh. Well, sorry about my burping and stuff, uh, but I probably won't edit that out because editing these things take forever. Although, probably should have stopped and just deleted it while I was there. Because that would have made it easy, but... I decided I would leave it in. <laughs> just so I could have an excuse for why I was tripping over stuff. Because I need an excuse! <laughs> but, anyways, uh... That was the end of chapter 3... Like, rate, well, rate, subscribe, uh, favorite, whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> like, just do it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm going to begin back to Awoken tomorrow. Wait, not tomorrow, because I don't have school tomorrow, probably, anyways. Not going to be doing it tomorrow, uh, maybe Mon- no, Tuesday-ish? That sounds about right. Or maybe I might just end up doing it tomorrow, who knows. But anyways, uh, yeah. So look forward to that, and goodbye.